Badger, you know, watching you on the Zoom the last couple of weeks, I've never seen you so intense. Like normally you're pretty jovial and you you got some good banter, but is it a huge relief now for you that you've done it? Yeah, look, we haven't done anything yet, uh, to be honest. Um, it's a massive accomplishment to finish where we have uh, on the league table, but that's just part one of the competition over. The you know. All the big games are yet to come and, and we've, got, we've got to refresh and, and, and review and see how we've got to where we've got to, but more importantly, how we're, get, how we're going to solve the problems of the next two or three weeks and, and try and lift that trophy in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, uh, what are those problems? Tell me what they are. Uh, look, we're always working on things to get better. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you or anyone else the things that we're working on to get better, but every day we're looking at things that we can do and tweak to, to, to ensure that we keep improving and keep evolving as a group and you know, until grand final day, we're going to keep doing that. Uh, just looking at the weekend, I know you caught it a backs to the wall performance, but tell me what impressed you most and who impressed you most? Uh, just the team, to be honest. The, the resilience we showed throughout the game. Um, you know, we had Ollie pull out two or three minutes before kickoff, which we haven't had so far this year. To, so not only lose a player, not only lose a key player, not only lose a leader, but your captain two or three minutes before kickoff. And, and you know, Nizzi comes in and Bowman comes in and Max Ballard comes onto the squad list. and. You know, re really didn't miss a beat. You know, the the performance that the boys showed, the hunger and the desire to to keep Western United out despite 60 or 70 percent possession against us. They they really didn't fashion too many clear cut chances, and and you know we protected our goal with our lives, which was really impressive. You know, uh, just talking to Jack Clisby, he's 29. He's he's played a fair bit of finals football, and you're going to need guys like that and Simo and Ollie that have played big matches to really kind of get around these young guys? Is that is that what this week's all about? Yeah, and Marco as well, obviously being a World Cup. So, you know, we've got a little bit of experience in, in the team and, and, you know, some of the formula and some of the secrets to success are obviously, you know, key leaders around the group and a lot of young guys with enthusiasm. And I think we got both this year. And, and the fact that the leaders have helped the young players grow so much on and off the pitch has, has helped us get to the position we're in. But no doubt finals is a whole new ball game, a whole new competition. It's life and death on the night. And, you know, I know that we're up for it. It's going to be a big game. And, and MacArthur, you know, we've beaten them three times in the competition, but they beat us once in a friendly um, just before the comp. So we know their qualities. We know they're a good team. Um, you know, the game's up for grabs, to be honest. But just the fact that we get to the starting line and we know that we're well in the hunt if we play to our best, then, then that really gives me a lot of confidence. Uh, you excited about this week at the Mariners? Like under your reign, we're we're in uncharted territory. And what does the week look like? Uh, look, we played FFA Cup finals last year, so for me, it's not really uncharted. It was a similar feeling. Um, it's life and death, and uh, and it's a knockout. And you know, we had a massive game against Adelaide last year. So, you know, it's ultimately it's a life and death moment. But at the same time, it's just another football match, and you've got to do the same things that you do every week to ensure that you give yourself the best possible chance of winning. What about squad news after the weekend? No, look, we're all okay at the moment. So, obviously, there's a couple of little niggles as there is, you know, after every match. But at the moment, everyone's fine. Um, Jack spoke about world-class players uh, with MacArthur. Like, who are the players that you really feel like you've got to nullify, keep them quiet on Saturday? Look, they've got five or six ex-Socceroos in their team who, who are all tremendous players and have been tremendous players. And then they're three or four imports as well are, are high quality. So we know that they've got quality all over the pitch. Um, you know, they've proven that every week in the competition and it's almost like the better the team they play against, the better they can play as well. So, you know, we know we're playing against a high quality team, an experienced team and, and, and one that's going to be hard to beat. But, you know, we've proven we can beat them. But, you know, there's no guarantee of success just because we beat them in the competition doesn't mean that this game's going to follow the same path. And, and, and we know that in these moments, you know, as we know in finals, it only takes one moment to win or lose a match. Uh, I spoke to Jack about the finals experience he's had and just the tempo. Like, are you expecting that the boys are going to have to play the best they've played all season to go to the second week of the final? Yeah, I think we see that in any code at any time. When you get to the business end of any competition or any kind of rep game, that, that the tempo of the game increases. And hopefully I have a massive crowd there to support us and, and even just having Having 10 or 15,000 people at the stadium is going to give the boys a big lift as well. So hopefully everyone comes out and supports the boys. I think they've really, really deserved that kind of support from the Central Coast community. After, after the loss in the F3 derby, do you feel like Saturday was just a huge confidence boost as well? Um, look, it was a little bit of a letdown, but again, uh, just the, the two or three weeks beforehand was, was, was a massive physical challenge and also emotional 
um, roller coaster, you know, playing Melbourne City away and then MacArthur away and, and sealing the three points down there and almost guaranteeing ourselves a final spot and having that little bit of a letdown. I think they're just the things that happen in a season. You know, you can't you can't win every week and be up every single week. Otherwise, you know, you, you know, I haven't seen too many sporting teams who just stay at their peak every week. But we had a little bit of a lull and we came back. And again, the way we came back was probably more impressive than the actual performance. Just those other qualities around football, you know, the resilience and the unity within the group was just was just super impressive. And they're really the hallmarks of what allows you to be successful in finals as well, I think. Uh after your last game against MacArthur, I think tactically you were just outstanding. I mean, do you go with the same, I mean, do you have to switch it up again for this game or do you use similar tactics that you used a couple of weeks ago when you had that thrilling win? Yeah, look, we don't, I don't think we have to switch anything up. Um, you know, as I said uh, earlier, we tweak things for every game and we try and improve every game. So, you know, I don't think we need a revolution. We just need to keep evolving and keep improving and that's what we do, you know, from from the first game in pre-season to now, I think we've grown enormously uh, as a team, but every individual's improved. You know, and the fact that we've got players in line for national teams and Olympic games and things just shows how much they've all improved as individuals. And ultimately, when each individual gets better, we improve as a collective, and, and that's, I think, what's happened all year. Yeah, look, it's a massive moment for, for the club and the team, but you know, I've been banging on all year about how important regional clubs are for the survival and, and expansion of, of football in this country, and this is now a little bit of a litmus test for the Central Coast community. Are, do they really want an A-League team, and are they going to come out and support it? And you know, I think that everyone needs to get on board and, and come out and support not only our team, but the code, and show that we really need to grow and expand our game throughout all regional areas of Australia, not just Central Coast. What about Danny? Like, uh, so he had that ankle injury after the MacArthur match. Can you give us any updates? Look, he's just improving every day. So, you know, whether he crosses the, the line of being available for the weekend or not, we don't know yet. It's still seven days away. Yeah.